Hi everyone, in our previous lesson, we already discussed on how to find the six trigonometric functions by just using the, the terminal point, finding the terminal point. And we also discussed in our previous lesson that we can find the six trigonometric functions by barely using our fingers in our hands. And now, what we will be having is, what? how about we are asked to find the six trigonometric functions of those angles that the terminal point will not fall in quadrant one. So say for example, you are asked to find what is the six trigonometric function of 225 degrees. So in that case, it will be a little bit hard for us to find the six trigonometric functions. So in that kind of example, all we have to do is to find the, the, the reference angle. So if Let's discuss a bit on what is a terminal, uh, what is a reference angle. A reference angle is an angle formed by your, uh, it is an acute angle formed by your terminal ray and your x-axis. So as we all know, your, your angle is in standard position if the initial ray is in the positive x-axis. Since it is positive, so it should be going to the counterclockwise direction. So if your terminal ray will fall in the quadrant one, then your reference angle must be here. So it's the acute angle being formed by your x-axis and your terminal ray. And if your initial ray is here and your terminal ray will fall in quadrant number two, then your reference angle must be somewhere here. And if your initial ray is here and your terminal ray will fall in quadrant number three, your reference angle is here. And if your initial ray is in the positive x-axis and your terminal ray will fall in the quadrant number four, your reference angle is here. Okay? So you can you can use those reference angle in fitting your special angles so that you will be able to know what is your terminal point by using your special special triangle it's either 30 60 90 or 45 45 90. let's have an example okay let us have this one as our example okay let us have let us try the angle two to five degrees say for example that is our angle oops let us graph it first number one your theta is equal to two to five degrees if we will graph it it must look like this. Of course, our initial ray will fall in the positive x-axis. And 2 to 5, so the, the, the direction should be counterclockwise since it is positive. So we have here 90, 180. So the 2 to 5 should be somewhere here. So it should be this angle. And of course, as we presented a while ago, if your, if your initial if your terminal ray rather is falling in quadrant number three, your reference angle must be here. So, and obviously if this is 180 degrees and this is 225 degrees, of course their difference is just 45 degrees, right? So what you're going to do here is you're just going to fit the, the, the special triangle 45, 45, 90. So here must be your terminal point. So all we have to do is we are just going to draw a unit circle field that will pass through that point because that will be your terminal point there. Since it's extended a little bit. So all we have to do is to determine what is that point. So what should be that point? So as we all know, we can draw here a special, uh, a special triangle wherein it is a 45 degrees, also this 45 degrees. If that is 45 degrees, here must be, as we all know, the opposite of 45 is square root of 2 over 2. Since it is going to the left, it should be negative. And also here, it's 45, so the opposite is square root of 2 over 2. It's going down, it's also negative. As we remember, in quadrant number 3, quadrant number 3, all points here are in quadrant number 3, the sign of the, the x should be negative and the sign of the the y is also negative. So as we have here, it should be square root of 2 over 2, negative square root of 2 over 2. So if we will be looking for 
the six trigonometric functions, of course, your sine of theta or the 2 to 5 must be the ordinate, which is negative square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of your theta is just the, the, the abscissa, which is negative square root of 2 over 2. And, of course, your tangent of your theta, since this is just the ratio of your sine and cosine, negative square root of 2 over negative square root of 2. So that is just 1. And if we are going to find the cosecant, the cosecant of the this one is just the reciprocal of your sine. It should be negative 2 over the square root of 2. You can rationalize it by multiplying square root of 2 over square root of 2. So it should be 2 square root of 2 over 2. It will be canceled out, so it should be negative square root of 2. And same thing, it will happen to your second of theta. Since the sine and cosine are the same, so of course the cosecant and second must also be the same, so it should be square root of 2. For the cotangent, since it is 1 for the tangent, so the reciprocal one of 1 is also 1. So these are the, the six trigonometric functions of 225 degrees. We just use the, the, the reference angle to find those values. Let's have one more. Let us try the number 3. So the number three will be here. So first thing that we will do is we will plot the negative 300 degrees. So as we have, if we will have it here, let's try it. So if the initial ray is in the positive x-axis, so it is a negative, so it should be clockwise direction. So you have here 90, you have here 180, 270 so here must be the 300 degrees so it should be this direction so it should be 300 oops 300 degrees as we will determine here if there's a 300 degrees let's make it clear it's 300 degrees so the if your reference if your terminal rate rather will fall in quadrant number one your reference angle must be somewhere here so, and obviously, if that is 300 degrees, so somehow it is just 60 degrees because the entire uh, rotation is 360. So, all we need to do here is we are going to plot here. We will draw here a unit circle. Okay, there. And after that, we are going to draw a triangle here. Of course, this must be 90. This must be 30 here. So as we all know that the opposite, this portion, the opposite of 30 is just one half. So it's going to the right, so it's positive. And for the 60 is square root of 3 over 2 going up, it's also positive. So you will be able to know that point. And of course, the longest side is 1 because this is a unit circle. So by this, you will be able to know that your terminal point is the point having the the abscissa, your x here, is 1 half. And your y here is square root of 3 over 2. They are both positive because your terminal point is in quadrant number 1. So since we already determined our terminal point, it is now easy for us to determine the sine of our theta, which is 300, negative 300 degrees. It should be square root of 3 over 2, positive square root of 3 over 2. And for the cosine, it should be one half the abscissa. For the tangent of your theta, it's just the ratio of your sine and the cosine. So it should be square root of three over two over one half. The one half will be canceled. The one the, the two rather will be canceled. So you will have square root of three. For the cosecant of your theta, it's just the reciprocal of your sine. So it should be two square root of three. You rationalize it. Of course, it will be 2 square root of 3 over 3. And for the second of your theta, it's just the reciprocal of your cosine, which is 1 half, so it becomes 2. For your cotangent of your theta, it's just the reciprocal of your tangent, so it should be 1 over the square root of 3. You can rationalize it by just having here square root of 3 over 3. 
that's it that's just simple as that you, can, you, you will be able to find the six trigonometric functions of this angle by just determining first the reference angle then determining the terminal point out of it by using the special triangles and then proceed in finding the six trigonometric functions and hope it will it will help you in your journey in trigonometry see you again in the next video have a nice day